Welcome back to Tomahawk Entertainment News. This week we have Fidel Perez with Indian Inside Tech Review in this week's installation of NHS Gamer. And like always, I'll be starting it all off with national sports news. They finally did it. The Eagles won the Super Bowl, beating the Patriots 41-33. to The Eagles are down until about two minutes left in the fourth quarter when Zach Ertz made a phenomenal and controversial catch, uh, which resulted in a touchdown and decided the outcome of the game. While some people disagree, I think the officials made the right call here in you know, calling it a touchdown. Now, I'd like to introduce you all to a phenomenon I like to call the anti-bandwagon bandwagon. You know, the Patriots have been a powerhouse and full of controversy for so long that millions of people around the country actually rooted for Philadelphia. Nobody likes Philly. Okay? The Winter Olympics are coming up in South Korea and Russia won't be represented. Recent investigations into their manipulation of the anti-doping system have revealed some pretty spicy stuff. And uh, there are Russian athletes competing, but they are represented by the Olympic flag, and their uniforms can't have any colors from the their native countries, you know. So the moral of the story is shooting your athletes up with horse steroids is wrong? Yeah? Well, that's it for this week in sports. I'm Connor Barrett signing off. Hello everybody and welcome to Tomahawk TV Entertainment News. My name is Garrett Stone and I've been tasked with this episode's PSA about how gaming ruins people's lives. Nah, just kidding. I'm here to talk about the support we got about our last episode. Specifically, the Nintendo Switch. So this week we're giving the viewers what they want. We have a closer look at the Switch controllers with a variety of ways to customize and use them, as well as our very first Switch-only game review for Super Mario Odyssey, a game that brings Mario back to its roots. So this is a complete Tech Gamer Nintendo Switch mashup only. Enjoy. Oh, uh, never mind. Apparently at some point Brady's gonna do some Xbox game like usual. <laughs> I swear, that guy just can't let it go. We know, Brady, Microsoft is your favorite. Yeah, it's the best. Yep. I'm serious. Mm-hmm. Well, I have a wonderful electronic invention I want you to see. It, it looks something like this. Hello, Alex Perez with this week's Indian Insight Tech Review bringing you the news on all things tech. And this week, we review multiple Switch remotes. The Switch has a multitude of controllers that they use, and they all have their own perks and flaws. So, let's get right into the review. To start us out, let's go with the original Switch remotes, the Joy-Cons. Their main purpose is to go on the main console and to be used similarly to how the Wii Motes were used. However, they make many improvements as they also come with grips that make them easier to hold and a handle to make them feel more like a normal controller. However, it does still feel a little clunky and leaves much to be desired. However, Nintendo has you covered on there. The Nintendo Switch Pro Controller is a very well built and manufactured remote. It feels much nicer than the rest of the controllers and has a massive battery life. Though it is a great controller, it does come at a steep price. If you want to make sure your money is well spent, then you might want to look into a Pro Controller with a custom skin to add a bit more personality to your remote. Whether you're a classic Mario fan or a diehard Zelda fan, you can bet you can find a skin you want. With all that said, the Switch remotes, both Pro and Normal, are well made and have their own pros and cons. The Pro Controller gets a solid 18 out of 20 while the stock controllers receive a 16 out of 20. Although the Pro Controller is amazing, its steep price knocks off some points. Luckily, it redeems itself in all other categories. The stock controller, on the other hand, while having cool mechanics, feels a little uneasy and makes some games feel a little odd. Overall, 
The controllers are way better than the N64 Nightmare. This has been Alex Perez with your Indian Insight Tech Review, signing out. Hello and welcome back to an all new NHS Gamer. I'm Tucker Roberts and today we'll be reviewing Super Mario Odyssey for the Nintendo Switch. Super Mario Odyssey is an amazing game unlike any other so far in this generation. Super Mario Odyssey takes some mechanics and controllers from Mario's previous games while adding in some brand new and improved ones that just makes the game much more diverse than the previous ones. Super Mario Odyssey has many different areas that are called kingdoms which range from Sand Kingdom with Mexican skeletons in a desert to Luncheon Kingdom which is made of sweets and delicacies. There are a total of 14 kingdoms which you travel through throughout the main story with the ship you find in store at the beginning called the Odyssey. Each of these kingdoms have power moons which drives your progression throughout the game. In the first kingdom there are a total of 40 power moons and the game has a total of 999 power moons. Super Mario Odyssey's story is the same as most Mario games where the mission is is that you have to save the princess, but instead of just kidnapping the princess this time, Bowser is kidnapping the princess to marry her. At the beginning of Mario's journey, Mario finds a ghost named Kepi who now gives Mario the power to take control of different objects and animals by turning into his hat. So Mario and Cappy have to go through each kingdom, chasing after Bowser as he steals precious items from kingdoms to make his wedding perfect. Super Mario Odyssey's gameplay has some mechanics and controls from some of Mario's most popular games, mainly Super Mario 64. The controls in Super Mario Odyssey are not complex at all. The most complicated controls takes a combination of two button presses to perform. Super Mario Odyssey's immersion is actually pretty good if you take the Joy-Cons off the Switch and use some of the motion controls, such as running faster, climbing faster, and most objects and animals you can turn into has their own use for motion controls. And last but not least is Super Mario Odyssey's charm. Super Mario Odyssey has compelling cartoonish graphics that are animated smoothly. Also, each kingdom has their own set of purple coins which you find and collect to buy items and clothing at the store to customize Mario in the Odyssey. And this game is full of detail. Just about every nook and cranny you check in has something to offer like coins, more health, or even a power moon. That about finishes off this week's game review of Super Mario Odyssey. Our overall Tomahawk score for Super Mario Odyssey is 17 out of 20. This has been Tucker Roberts and don't try the two player mode. The Tomb Raider series has always been a big hit ever since the release date on October 25th, 1996. The game itself reshaped the way that new games were made from then on. It had one of the best storylines and graphics from that date. It was one of the first in the series and it was one of the best ones made because it had rewritten all the rules was to come after that. And here we are in 2018 and going over one of the newer games in the series, Tomb Raider Definitive Edition. Tomb Raider Definitive Edition got a 9 out of 10 from IGN, which I think is a pretty fair rating. I thought the game had a great story, and I was so immersed in the main story that I started playing at noon and was stopped what I thought was an hour later, but it was 6 o'clock. I also want to cover an important subject in the gaming world, charm. You know, the fact that it says, hey, this was a pretty good game for having such a terrible story, but nevertheless, Tomb Raider has an amazing level of charm within it. It has lovable characters and a great progression of the weapons and improvements. I fell in love with the way you interact with the people around you. Another fact that makes the game lovable is the controls. They give you a nice, smooth, natural feel as you play a quick paced story with quick level progression. The fast pace of the game also keeps you enthralled in the immersive battle tactics. That about wraps it up for this week's game review. Our tomahawk total for Tomb Raider is a whopping 14 out of 20. Join us next time for another game review. This is Brady York, your voice in the wasteland. That's all for this week in entertainment news. Be sure to tune in next week. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe below. Thanks for watching.